Okay, thank you. Uh, in fact, I want to say something before I start my talk. Uh, I'm a 100% pure engineer. Uh, I graduated from electrical engineering, uh, NTU, a long time ago. In Berkeley, actually, uh, I'm still electrical engineer, but I, min I minor in mechanical engineering. And uh, after I joined the Caltech, I spent most of the time working on aerospace product, aerodynamics. Okay. And then later on, actually, I found a perfect uh, research uh, direction on medical devices. And uh, what I'm going to show you, actually, is only part of it. Uh, but I've been working on it for at least 15 years. So I think this is one direction I want to bring to you. And I think your center actually is perfect. Uh, has a perfect advantages and talents with various uh, different uh, background and you should be able to, to go the same direction if you agree with me that's interesting so <clears throat> all right this is actually uh, the first the world first micro motor so it's very mechanical but it's micro mechanical you will see some similar things actually in the devices I do. When I was a graduate student, that was a long, long time ago. And the diameter of the micromotor is 60 micron. This is a human hair, actually uh, a thick hair. My hair is, uh, when I was young, pretty thick. So it's also about 60 micron. Uh, if you want to actually trace some of the things I did or interest in some of the things I do, this is uh, my website. Actually, you can see is to make various different I'll call it mechanical devices. So actually everything starts with the micro mechanical devices. Now this field actually is called MEMS. Some people even add an N in between the M and E. So it's micro nano electromechanical system. So I don't want to say too much about it, except that electromechanical system really from the engineer's point of view is everything. This whole world is electromechanical. Okay. So uh, some people say chemical. Chemical is only coolant force. It's all dominated by coolant force, which is electrical force. Okay. How about acoustic? That's mechanical. So electromechanical basically means the whole world. Okay. So don't be fooled. <laughs> uh, it's really interesting. Now, in the men's field, for the last 30 years, right? In fact, uh, there are many, many devices coming out. The most famous products from the men's field the last 30 years are all the MEMS devices go into your cell phones. Today, your cell phones has a microphone, that's a MEMS device. You also have the salarometers, okay, that's the MEMS device. Gyroscopes, the MEMS device. There's also mag magnetometers. And in the future, you may see gas sensor in there and also some medical devices. So actually, the interesting point actually in the MEMS is, what's the next direction? And you know in real world, Every field goes into an escalator, right? At the beginning, very low, and then it starts to emerge. It emerges very fast, and then saturate out. And then it's time to look for new direction, new product, a new cycle. So what's next? So uh, 10 years ago, I forced myself to believe this is real, so I'm showing it to you. <laughs> big data, right? That's the time. Actually, 10 years ago, everybody started to talk about big data. Now, if you don't have big data, what should we believe? So if you take a look at this interesting data, it starts from 1929. 1929 is right before the stock market crash. This is a world depression, right, 1930. All the way to, well, 2005. So it's pretty, pretty uh, a broad period of time. These curves actually represent some basic spending. Right here, yeah. Five curves, actually, you should pay attention to. There's a housing. Well, if, if you have $100, you count where do you spend your $100. That's what it means. Housing is one here, transportation, recreation, household operation, and medical care, right? Okay? This is actually from 1929 to 2005. In terms of percentage, most of the category remain the same percentage, except one category. Can you tell me which one is that? Right Medical care is the only single spending category that continues to grow. 
for the last when? How many years? About 19, at least 19, 29, especially after World War II, all the way to now. All right? Even Taiwan doesn't follow this world well. You know, the rest of the world follow this world. So we all want to live longer. If you don't want to live longer, then you should keep the medical care at the level. So that's a fact. So then you take a look at this. This is a very interesting data. This is actually global health market. In fact, 2017, the best data comes from last year. 2018 is still going. Right? $11 trillion dollars world spending on medical care. How big is that? That's a 14% of global world product. That means all the GDP. You add all the countries in the world together. In fact, it's about $79 trillion. $79 trillion the whole world is making. $11 trillion is spent on medical care. That's 14%. That's a huge spending. Taiwan, do you know anyone knows Taiwan? Taiwan? What percentage of GDP is spent on medical care? Miserable 5%. Yeah. Okay? I'll show you some number. But anyway, this number, keep in mind, right? It's the single biggest growing spending. Now, a lot of people know this. In Taiwan, you have to talk about something in doctor. So you have friends or people you can talk to, right? So a lot of people think something in doctor industry is the biggest industry. Wow, it's not bad. It's $410 billion. Okay, the whole world automotive industry is only 200 billion. So this is big, it's big. 410 billion dollars. But take a look, one category. This is the only medical device. The world medical device market, 420 billion dollars, much bigger. 10 billion dollars bigger than semiconductor. Another thing actually you should also pay attention to. Semiconductor industry has is cycling. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Medical device, medical industry, never goes down. You get sick when you're poor. You get sick when you're rich. You get, you get sick no matter when. <laughs> so actually it's a great industry to get into. In fact, I'm hoping Taiwan should spend more effort to get into this. This is the only medical device. Now drug, pharmaceutical, three times of this, okay? Aspirin. Uh, antibiotics, some special antibiotics, right? three times of this. So which industry is bigger? It's not something in doctor. Okay, I'm sorry to some of the electrical engineer here. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the forefront of medical devices? I hope I convinced you today. It's implants, devices go inside your body. Now, when I was little, we used to watch movies that a lot of stuff go into our body, and then we say, well, it's a sci-fi, a fiction. Right? Actually, it's becoming real. I'm hoping you agree. This is actually the only U.S. implant market. The only U.S. Just implant U.S. $70 billion already. 2017. Big. The whole Taiwan GDP is only $500 billion. Right? U.S. implant is already $70 billion. So, these are the categories I think you are not unfamiliar with. These are the implants that actually a lot of people know. Starting from the brain, actually there's a deep brain stimulator which can treat Parkinson's disease, right? Okay, some of you know. If, if you don't, go to YouTube. You just know, type in DBS, deep brain stimulator. You will see a lot of videos of me. Cochlear implant, right? Okay, some people actually lose their hearing as long as their cochlea is still intact. You put electro in there, it's a hundred thousand implants per year right now. And this is big, of course, because of life and death, pacemaker and defibrillator, okay? Uh, that actually is already 20 billion dollars a year, all right? And then this actually is growing, the gastric stimulator, to make your internal intestine actually working fine. You don't have stomach problems and all that. These days, the modern, in the modern world, most of us have gastric problems. And then the one that goes up actually very fast is insulin pump, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people want to get away from needle injection to automated injection. That is growing very fast. And food drop, a 
Okay, food dropping, but actually a lot of people, their lower limb, the, the nerve actually got damaged. And all these current devices, right, it's already $30 billion and larger than 15% of growth for the last 50 years already. Okay. Semiconductor doesn't grow as much anymore. Any field, 20% growth per year is already very, very, very big. And these never go down, only go up. And another future trend to tell you is the whole world is facing aging population crisis. We live longer, we have more older people, and more medical care. But this is the forefront, and actually these actually involve the wireless implants. So uh, some of you actually may already have seen this. And I saw, I saw these pictures more like 15 years ago. I was shocked. So this is a pacemaker. It's, it's saving millions of people's lives every day, right? This is actually cochlear implant. Okay? If you are not shocked, take a look at this. Deep breath stimulator. It's the only, right now, the only good scientific product to treat or remove the trembling of Parkinson's disease. Level, okay? Of course, the marijuana and, and cocaine also do the job, but uh, <laughs> there are a lot of bad effects, right? Side effects. So this is the so take a look. In fact, this is extra you can pay attention to. The first time I saw this, I said, well, I feel ashamed. Why? It's like two chopsticks sticking into your brain, both sides. Two chopsticks, really the chopstick lens, sticking in. And then you see the wire. If you are electrical engineer, oh, you got to feel ashamed. <laughs> you see the wire? And then actually go out, go behind the ear, go along the neck, go to this big metal box. I was the electrical engineer, I look at this, come on. Wiring like that, right? <laughs> two chopsticks, <laughs> and such a big metal case put inside the body. So what do you think of? Make it small, more functional. There's no way to avoid that. So actually, about 15 years ago, I already told myself, yeah, for the rest of my life, which is not very long, but for the rest of my life, I, I want to do my implants. So actually, the first thing, you gotta decide, well, once you decide what to do, the first thing is exactly what you're gonna do, right? So actually, at that time, I decided to say, hmm, I. I is very important organ, Second to your brain. Okay, that's why I is very close to your brain, right? Another reason is that when you face aging population, the eye becomes the second most difficult organ to deal with. Okay? So actually I'll show you more later on. This is your eye. It's very complicated. In fact, the right eye is treated as part of your central nervous system. That means the part of your brain. Okay, it's very thin. It covers 260 degrees. This right now. But the most important vision happens right here. It's called macula. Right? It covers about 20 degrees of vision. But you're reading, right? Trying to solve a mathematical problem. All you're using is really the macula. There's a lens problem, cornea problem, and uh, there's a blood circulation problem. So I'll show you one by one. Right? This is a healthy on the side, when the doctor look into your eye, you will get this, right? Taiwan the Chen Jianbao, you get this a lot. If you haven't done, got this of your eye, go do it. Okay? So actually, this is an optical nerve that goes to the brain. This is this is the method. Right? This part actually you gotta protect. So, but I, how many diseases are there? My God, this is uh, yes. This is Taiwan has this uh, myopia problem, TCM. Most serious problem. There's so many diseases. Even more. Okay, you can you can you can get this. But I want to talk about if these diseases lead to blindness. That's the end stage blindness, blindness. It turns out blindness is the second most severe disease after cancer. Now cancer, no one wants to get it. Number one thing you don't want. What's the number two you don't want? 
to be blind. So actually you want to be able to see. It's so painful if you're not able to see. So we actually focus on diseases that will lead to blindness most. Top four. <coughs> four major causes of blindness. Top four. Right now there are about 40 to 50. Actually I believe it's more towards the 15 million globally right now, right? The whole world has 15 million blind people. It costs a lot of money to support blind people. There are four major causes for diseases. Number one, cataract, biting them. Number two, glaucoma, qinghuangmi. Number three, AMD, laryngeal Yeah, age-related macular disease. Number four, diabetic retinopathy. Right. If you add it up, this is actually close to 80% of the blindness caused by these four diseases. So, as an engineer or a scientist, can you do something about it? I'm going to show you my research that leads to treatment of these all four. Hopefully, actually, we can prevent it too. The first, cataract, which actually is part of vision problem. So it's linked together by presbyopia, right? Presbyopia, la, la, la Hawaii. Myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism. It's all in one category. So today, if you have a cataract, very simple, that actually means, suppose your liquid lens, we call it crystalline lens, become opaque. So these are actually cataract eye, this cataract eye. Pets almost exclusively going to get cataract. Your dogs or cats when they learn fully enough. So it's not just human, right? Almost all animals have this problem. So when you have this problem, you have many, many choices. or cheap one. Okay. If you want a good one, you have to pay, the last time I checked, about 60,000 NTUs, right? So uh, these are all the lenses. But there's one big problem of current all lenses. They all have fixed focus. There are multi full side lenses, that means two. So you can see far, you can also read. But the light split 50 50. You'll feel the whole world is darker all the time. But today's lens actually do not give you good thing. So the holy world is accommodating. Just like when you are young, well, some of you are still young. You don't need reading glasses because your lens can be deformed to change the lens. It's called accommodation. Okay? It's like camera, auto camera can change focus. When you get old, you don't get it. So intraocular lens today, the holy grail, is lens that can change focus. So you don't need reading glasses in the Now presbyopia actually is a natural disease. Eventually, 100%, 100%, no one can avoid this. 100% of us, if you live long enough, you're going to get presbyopia, not why. So actually, when you are reaching like 50, you've only got one doctor. That is the time you need reading glass. When you reach 60, you have no chance, well, statistically, to change your lens for the thing. So, presbyopia. So actually, one of my research is to Believe it or not, this is just one graduate student's research. Accommodated intraocular lens, right here, biomimetic. In fact, it's an oil bag, it's an oil balloon, but it has a man's valve. Okay, there's a tiny little bit of valve that allows you to open it up close, so you can use a needle to inject oil in there. This is a biocompatible oil, and then take it out. And this whole thing is very thin, only about 20 micron, so it's very easy to change shape. So after cataract surgery, taking out the opaque lens and put this in, these are the numbers amazing. In fact, this is a real human. This experiment was done in Mexico. This is a human eye without a lens. Okay. In fact, my student built this lens and it works really well. In fact, laboratory experiment shows that maximum nine diopters. What does that mean? So even we put this into an 80 years old eye. This person can see as well as when he's 30 years old. That's what it means. So this is my research. And spin off as a company tried to commercialize it. So actually you can see this is mostly mechanical engineering work. 
right? So mechanical engineering can contribute a lot. So second disease, second leading disease cause uh, blindness, glaucoma. So what is glaucoma? Okay, glaucoma <laughs> is actually natural eyes, right? If you have a natural eyes, the blood supplying nutrients, oxygen to the eye also provides net liquid flow into the eye, right? So actually, from trabecular batch, actually the front of the eye on the corner, water has to come out. When you're young, you're healthy, equal amount of the fluid coming into your eye and go out. Okay, so there's a delicate plumbing problem, sui guan wen. Gakoma actually is when the drain is blocked. So liquid cannot get up. So it's plumbing blockage problem. So actually, if you understand that, what, what, what can, how do you treat it? Put a new pipe in it. In fact, that's the most advanced research right now. So gakoma, if you don't treat it, okay, it can cause all kinds of disease and eventually become blind. In fact, that's because the optical disc got deformed. IOP, intraocular pressure, is too high. All right, so I'll show you actually some of the research we did. The first thing actually is to develop what we call intraocular pressure sensor, a pressure sensor put inside your eye. So we can monitor the pressure 24-7. Today, believe it or not, today, there's no such device. Today, no such device. Even you want one, commercially not available. Okay. We all think, wow, our human technology is so advanced. No, we're still in stone age in terms of medical technology. So the first thing actually is biomedical sensors, that's intraocular pressure sensor to measure the pressure. In fact, just recently, this was really just a few months ago, we developed a very interesting pressure sensor on bench, on bench test, accelerated test, that means uh, going to 87 degrees C soaking. We're actually showing our new device can last for 10 years. At least all the data are on bench. That actually is a really good result. We are hoping uh, we can commercialize it. It's under commercialization. Now, how about treatment? In fact, this is the first thing we did. This is about 15 years ago. The first thing we did is we make various different micro valves. These are micro valves. Okay, very small valve, cross section, right? This, this cross, this diameter is only 200 micron. Only 200 micron. Can you imagine you use a 200 micron size as a limit and build a valve that can control various different pressure leakage? Okay, for the eye, we need 10 to 15 millimeter mercury. So it will open and leak. With this, we were able to build a device. This is just a tube, right? This is, this is, this is plumbing. At both ends, we have two valves. One opens at 15 millimeter mercury. So that means it starts to drain at 15 millimeter mercury. So keep the pressure at 15. The other valve actually closes at 50 because if you are robbing your eye, we close it, we don't drain it. Okay? This actually is a forefront research what people want. It's really drain device, but it's very delicate. Again, this is NEMS. And someday actually we may even want to go to NEMS direction, really even smaller than this. In fact, the right now, the smallest two people put inside the eye is about 50 micron in diameter to drain your eye fluid so your eye don't get blind. All right, the third disease. This is interesting as age-related macular disease, AMD, Lao Nian Huang Ban Zhen, Jue Zhen. This disease, today, there's no drug, just like cancer. In fact, cancer has many drugs now. This has no drug. The only drug actually treat AMD is when there's a bleeding, they will stop the bleeding, but they cannot treat macular disease. But engineering can do a lot, I'll show you. And actually AMD, the reason AMD is, if you take a look at these dots, is because 
photoreceptors, this is retina on top, and this is blood supply. There's a lot of accumulation, accumulation of bad molecules, bad waste. Okay? Exactly what are the waste? It's mostly related to obesity. So if you get fat, okay, or imbalance of your kidney function, accumulation, they call it drusen. You see all these drusen. When drusen expand, you see the white stuff. It's called huangban. White, that is the yellow stuff, yellow stuff. That actually means completely block the blood nutrient supply, oxygen supply to your retina. So your retina, what happened to the retina? Choke to death. There's no oxygen. That's very simple. Very, very simple. So uh, how do you treat it? All right. So I'm going to show you actually there are two things we did a research. The first thing actually related to mid stage. Now early stage, as I said, doctor wouldn't even do anything. Just say, well, I already. But it's a uh, Jason, so there's nothing they can do. It's not because they cannot treat you. It's because there's nothing to treat you. But when you reach a mid stage, it's right before the blindness. This is serious. So actually, the one thing we did. If you understand what's problem, it's really the juice and the blocking oxygen. Okay, so actually the first thing is, what they call it RPE cell, the, the retinal uh, pigment, pigmented epithelial cells, they die. These cells die. So actually if they die, everyone can think of one direction to treat as well. Using what? Stem cells. Is there possible to do stem cell treatment? Japan actually did this. They use uh, <coughs> IPS cell. Okay. What they do is, this is inside the eye. Whenever these cells die, they just use a needle. Penetrate the scar. Okay. Inject stem cell suspension. Okay. They found out there's one problem. Our body is very interesting. If you inject your cells randomly, you have no control where they go. <laughs> Almost all the stem cells just disappear. No one knows where they go. Okay, so actually our method is to build this very interesting device. In fact, it's just a substrate. Okay, but it's to replace Brooks membrane, which is the natural membrane. We use perlin, this is artificial, and we open up a lot of nano thickness window. So oxygen can go, nutrient can go. But on the surface, it's flat. And the next move is to put stem cells on the surface, all right? So actually, we did about two years how, how, what thickness you can do, what ge geometric sizes that, can, that, that matters most. And then put stem cells on and treat the surface, right? So stem cells love to stay on the surface. They don't go out of place. In fact, it was just last month, right? This is a science uh, translational medicine. You see, this device is developed from my lab and with a stem cell. Five patients have this surgery. They all improve their vision. So if you believe in stem cells, this is actually one thing, again, medical device is very important part of it. Without the substrate, it won't work. We actually call it stem cell scaffold. The scaffold is very important for stem cell treatment. In fact, uh, there's a lot of interest to apply the same to Alzheimer's disease, spinal cord injury. They all want to try stem cell. It turns out scaffold is very important. So if you're an engineer and want to work on that topic, it's very interesting. Now, how about the late stage? That means you're already blind. There is a company called Second Sight. There are the only, this is the only company that has FDA, US FDA approval. They call it August 2. 60 channels, right here. If you count 60 electrodes. You can imagine that if you have a cell phone. How, how many pixels does camera you have in your cell phone? Any idea? 20 media. This device has only 60 pixels. Can you imagine you use a 60 pixel to see the world? 
I'm telling you, you will be surprised. I, I have a video. This is not my work. This is a second size work. But you should see this video. No one expects grandma to play like a Her name is Linda. I talked to her twice. Any ball who is in is amazing. She's totally blind. The small circle in her glasses is a camera. And some clever electronics turn the images into patterns of drama and blind. She has only 16 channels. And she told us a lot of story how 16 channels can change the world. So actually, we want to increase the number of channels, right? So actually, we did a lot of work. Uh, I'll skip this. This is actually the first technology we have to develop. You see, actually, we have to have a very flexible cable, right? And we also have to have a lot of metal lines. This is a platinum because everything has to be bought and back. The first thing actually is to build the fundamental cable, just cable. But that's biocompatible, very flexible because you're going to put inside that. Right? And we also have to develop special coils. Again, this is engineering. Uh, all the components you need and you don't have. Okay? You have to build everything, but it's very interesting, very challenging. This is actually the electro we build. This, it has to be curved too, right? Why it has to be curved? You have to match the curvature of your eyeball. So when you go in, it can stay on your macula. So you can see this is OCT, it's perfect match. So future actually, this is a person specific medicine. In fact, 2008, 10 years ago, my first PhD student working on this project built a single channel, one pixel device. One pixel. Can you see the world with one pixel? Well, at least you can tell it's the daytime or nighttime, right? The one pixel. So actually, uh, after 10 years, actually, my third graduate student, 2014, about well, six years after, build a 1024 prototype. So actually this is 24. It requires an ASIC chip and there's a coil. There's a lot of electronics. So uh, we spin off the company. It's right now to commercialize. We're hoping to bring up at least more than 60 channels. Okay, maybe give us a couple more years. You can see the device coming out uh, from the company. And real human trial should start in about a year. At least that's what we hope. So this is one example that even after you're blind, keep in mind, this is the late stage, we can give blind people some vision, all right? And uh, we have no idea how far we can do it. But I personally believe one day with the right device implanted into their eye, even if they were blind, after the device, they can still drive a car on the street. Don't be surprised. Okay. We're still working on it. This is the fourth disease because time is, uh, I know it's getting better. But I want to talk about this. Diabetic retinopathy. Another Diabetes is a very, very serious disease, right? Okay? In fact, there's a recent development, it's very interesting. Google, there's a thing, AI thing. They spent 10 years developing one AI software. They look at your fungus diagram, the circular diagram, and tell you whether you have diabetes, retinopathy. Big success. They can identify more than 98% accuracy. That doctor can only do 70%, especially early stage. So they claim, they claim, there may be 200 million diabetic retinopathy patients in the world right now, early stage. I asked them one question. I said, well, you have a great technology. You identify 200 million new patients. I asked them, what can you do for them? The answer is nothing. This is a typical one problem that treatment is a lot more important than diagnostics. In fact, it's very interesting. If you get into this field, at least me, if you cannot treat me, don't tell me I'm sick. <laughs> the, the old joke is I have good news and bad news for you. All right? The bad news is what? Well, the good
good news is we find out what's wrong with you. The bad news is there's nothing we can do. <laughs> okay. So actually, my graduate student recently did two devices that I want to introduce to you. So diabetic retinopathy, actually what happened is the blood sugar, because of diabetic, blood sugar is always high. Blood sugar high damages your blood vessels. So control your blood sugar. Okay, that's very important. If the blood vessels damage in the eye, it's diabetic retinopathy. If it's in the teeny, teeny failure. If it's the fingers and toe, you got also. Okay, it's well known diabetes, right? So actually in the eye, there's a bleeding and all that. There are medicines to stop the bleeding. That's it. Okay? Again, it is only to stop emergency, urgent bleeding. Nothing else they can do. But the disease still advances. So actually, today this is how <laughs> right after lunch, but <laughs> two most popular treatments. If you have diabetic retinopathy, they use a laser to kill 90% of your retina. The reason is what is a lack of oxygen. Lack of oxygen. So there are only two ways. Cut spending on oxygen. Kill 90% of your retina. So you see all these spots of laser killing your retina. The other way actually is if there's a bleeding, they really use a needle. So some patient has to take the needle like every two weeks. Can you imagine? Every two weeks go see a doctor, they put a needle through your eyeball and inject that medicine into your eye. And, and again, they cannot reverse, they cannot treat, they cannot prevent the progress of this disease. So the first device, my student just published this. This is actually, they call it light therapy of early diabetic retinopathy. If this work, works, right, if this device works, it will be the first one in the world, right? It's, it's amazing how engineering can take care of medical diseases. In fact, there are two devices. This is contact lens, and these spokes, these are radio, radioactive light, lighting. You know a lot of access sign. Even if there's a shortage of electricity, you can still see the access sign. It's radioactive lighting, essentially. So what does it do? This, this device actually implants, put inside the eye. Put inside the eye so the lighting is always there inside the eye. It turns out our biology is very interesting. Our retina goes crazy if there's no light. Okay, just like a hyper child. If there's nothing to attract the child, the child goes crazy. Your eye does exactly the same. It's back in for four times. <laughs> So if you give your eye a little bit full time, your eye is very calm. <laughs> and do not use much oxygen. So at night, when you turn off the night, go to sleep, your eye is craving for oxygen. Most of the damage happens when you sleep. So this device is to provide a tiny little bit of light to calm down the right hand. Okay? Now actually we're trying to raise money for a human trial. If it works, it will be the first device ever to treat that body right now. The second device, in fact, if you understand the theory, no oxygen, no oxygen, no oxygen. The first device is what? Reduce oxygen consumption, right? Another way is what? No oxygen, that's what? Bring oxygen to it, there you go. Now, the reason there's no oxygen is because your blood vessel is not doing the job. So actually we design a device. Conceptually, start from the side of the eye, at the corner of the cornea, bring oxygen all the way to the back, to your macula. Well, oxygen from where? Air. From air. That's simple. These are all the devices student built. And it works. At least, at least on animal experiments. So, well, I guess I did. I, I skip a lot of detailed data. So, these are the two devices. One cuts the oxygen consumption. The other device bring oxygen from the air to your eye. We're hoping actually these two devices will become the first two that can treat that battery right now. Okay. We also work on many other things. In fact, this is also very important, the drug delivery into the eye. Better than using what the needle puncture of the eyeball, uh, 
it's a, it's a big industry, but uh, that should be improved. So actually, we also work on electronics, packaging, mechanical, small refillable drug pump. So the best way to show you is the video. In fact, we built this as a thumb site, the world's smallest drug pump. Again, spin off. Uh, industry is very interesting. Uh, Seventy billion dollars being spent on now. This is the pump right here. It's not that. Okay. <laughs> this is the controller. This is the pump. Totally wireless. Okay. And this is only to turn on the wireless early system. You can imagine we already moved to the cell phone. You can use the cell phone to control the pump. So you can set 8.3 microliter. How big is 8.3 microliter? This tiny little droplet. So you can see right. Here. If there were 8.3 microliter, you can imagine how, what components in there you need. There's ASIC, integrated circuit chip, right? And there's a flow sensors, there's a pump, everything packaged into a tiny little thing I can put in on the side of the eye. That's the important. We are actually also exploring this pump. You see the refill, and this is a cell phone. Uh, I can use the control. It can be used to treat cancer. It can be attached to the tumor. It can be put inside your knee treat your knee problem. Knee problem is a problem we are working on. We're very interested to work on because uh, 9 out of 10 older people like me have knee problem. Right? Uh, engineering has a lot to do with it. I, well, it's about time I will show you some other project. Right? Not just I. There are many things. This is actually one project we really want to push for. This is to completely cure type 1 diabetes. In fact, we think type 2 can also be done. Human eyelids. So one person can donate the pancreas to another person. There's a process developed to take the, we call it actually beta cell, right? This eyelid actually is a group of beta cell. Beta cell produce insulin when, when the blood sugar is uh, high. We actually developed one device that's interesting. This is an oxygen device too. It will bring oxygen from one place to another place where you have lack of oxygen. So we actually put Eyelids on the other end. Now, for eyelid transplantation today, it turns out the biggest problem is right after implantation, the eyelid burns so much oxygen, so this is hypoxia. So actually, lack of oxygen prevent its survival, prevent its growth. You only need two weeks, right? Within two weeks, new blood vessels gonna grow into the eyelid. Then that's it. But there's a need for one device to keep to keep the local area with a high oxygen concentration for two weeks. So the same device will. In fact, we did this on rats. It works beautiful, two weeks. And if this works, actually, this is one possible way to actually do eyelid transplant with our device, we call it oxygen transport, to completely cure type 1 diabetes. That's actually a big problem. And actually, type 2 is a significant population, also can be treated with insulin. Okay, so this actually can also work, but it's not as sure as type 1. But anyway, this is one device we're working on. We're really pushing for implantable pressure sensor, just pressure sensor. Because our body is a fluidic system. Right? Yeah. So pressure, information, is very important. Today, believe it or not, I call today's medical technology still in stone age. I asked the doctor, can you tell me what's the pressure distribution over my body? They just laugh at you. you, know? if you believe me, if you, if you can try, try type 1 doctors, right? They go, no! They only know blood pressure, right? How about, how about your, your, your blood pressure in kidney? How about your blood pressure in your lower limb? In fact, in order to really diagnose the whole body, you should have pressure everywhere. So actually, just a pressure sensor, just a pressure sensor. We use a pressure sensor everywhere in the world. Why not in our body? We're developing the pressure sensor that can be put inside our body everywhere. Just a simple challenge. If you have a good idea, let's come. But it's very badly needed technology, not there for thousands of years. So we're also very interested to go to the brain. So uh, this is actually a small device that we can go and put in that brain. Brain actually, brain initiative is big in the United States. I hope Taiwan can catch up a little bit on that too. 
Uh, I also actually work on implant devices that can put right on top of your spinal cord. This is actually to treat spinal cord injury. In fact, uh, we have a lot of proven what? Well, look about that. This is very interesting, right? So in the United States, when we write proposals, they say, oh, don't go to human. Go to animal first. Oh, don't go to pig. Too big. Go to rats first. It turns out technology is more difficult, right? Go, go down to smaller, smaller thing. But uh, <laughs> it's a very good challenge. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I would love to show you this. It's uh, it's also the nerves of the lower body this is right. to walk. Now, it's not the, the nerves that go with those muscles. It's it really is the external stimuli of the electrical When you put it, you turn, and electrical and current to the spinal cord and, 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 and then the training, that's right, because when they, when they first start this, the, the animal cannot walk unassisted, right? The animals don't all. Right. In fact, they sort of dragged along on the treadmill. But they found that this locomotion, the really training the, the muscles, uh, uh, combined with the nerve stimulation and the right that's the, is really the difference. So a lot of engineering, right? So the first is build a, a little little rat treadmill. It's very fun. Uh, in fact, uh, the first question after that is we question whether this can be translated to human. Seven human has spinal cord stimulation experiment. They all improved tremendously. I skip the video. If you want to see the video, I'll show you some amazing video. They turn on the current. They can move their leg. They can stand. There are many other functions I don't want to talk about in front of the camera. So, uh, <laughs> significant others. That's uh, many other people also see this direction. So I'll show you some example. This is most recent cardio lens. They actually develop a pressure sensor that can put into their pulmonary artery. That's a that's a feet on the man. The first device ever. Just a pressure sensor. So send you. Paid two point eight billion dollars for that, for a device not yet mature. Okay, because that pressure sensor can save people's life. Okay, just the pressure sensor inside your heart can tell you, give you a warning and save your life. Right. This is actually uh, another integrated technology, cochlear implant. Today's cochlear implant is still sixty years old. I show you the x-ray of the deep breath stimulator. 60 years old technology. Developed 60 years old, 60 years ago. So a lot of new technology can change medicine, right? Not necessarily drug, but just engineering. So I'm hoping you will be interested. This is actually coming. You know the pacemaker, right? I didn't do this, this is Medtronic. They want to actually, it's, it's, it's commercially available already. The whole pacemaker is just like it. Directly put inside the heart. The old one is why electro go to the heart, maybe actually three E's, right? Go to the left ventricle, right ventricle, and atrial, atrium, and go out and go, go to the chase, the big metal case. No, no, that's the thing. only that big. Okay. We all want things to be small when you put inside the body. So you must have also heard this contact lens, suddenly everything can be added to a contact lens, right? Okay, it's real, it's real. Just wait, it's coming. Many, many functions, including pressure, including Google actually, you know, had a contract with the University of Washington. They want to do, they want to do glucose concentration measuring using the contact lens. Okay, I hope that part is still alive. Some people even want to do display. This whole content and put on is a display to fight against the Google Glass. So actually, content lens is very interesting. I know this is real. Many companies are working on this. I don't think any company, I don't know any in Taiwan yet. Go to the brain. The brain stimulator, and in fact, in COVID reporting, can be used to treat epilepsy, stroke. Al Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, depression, cognition deficiency, all these major diseases today driven. Okay? Driven. In fact, there was a reporting from UK. Teenagers, when they do intracranial current stimulation, they learn mathematics better. Okay, it's a real report. Okay. 
So actually using current, the electrical current, the tree brain actually is very interesting. I want to show you, closing to the end, the first actually alarming numbers. This is the health numbers. It's very interesting. Big data. In US, US spend actually 16% GDP. So per person per year is $8,680 per person per year. US actually spend $341 per pet per year, per dog per year. The adventurous number. Taiwan. Well, it's all open data, right? 1260 dollars per person per year. Is it big enough? Actually, far from big enough. Later on, I'll show you data. China is only 350. India, 250 per person per year. So we're much better than China and India. What does that mean? This is, in, this is important data. This is big data. This is actually about 60 years data. Horizontal spending per person per year. This is how long they expect a person to live. Of course, you want it to be high, right? So actually, this curve sort of tells you everything. Except the US spend more money, but <laughs> no life, no. OK, that actually many other reasons. US are more creative. They, 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 they do crazy sports. They kill themselves, and they still feel good. So, uh, another reason is their insurance system is so bad. So we have Chen Jianbao, which we, we, we were very proud. So where's Taiwan? Right here. So actually, overachiever. But actually, this is really where the group is. Japan has the highest. Hong Kong is right next to it. They all spent close to three, two, three thousand dollars. So actually, if we want to improve our life expectancy by another four or five years, there's still a lot to go. This is not important. The more important thing, where is the future? At lunch, I was asked, what do we think? How old will we eventually get? What, where is the future, you think? Here's two dimensional. Not only we want to go out, right? How much study? I think this is where we have the target for. OK? So actually, two directions we go. If you're into this, this, this world, which means what? We need new technology to make ourselves live longer. And we want to stay within reasonable spending, not here. Okay? <laughs> so actually, we also need cheap technology, too. Cheap new technology. That's real. That will change the world. That's the message. Okay? And even Taiwan has to do that. So the last message is micro implants are really from here. I'll be coming daily life soon. So uh, if you are interested in this, you should look into this. You have the ability to contribute in medicine. Don't you think medical is, is none of your business? That's not true. And thank you.